I'm Mike Gray. Um, I'm the district fish biologist for the Coos, Coquille, and Ten Mile Fish District. Uh, we're located out of the Charleston Field Office. Well, starting on the north end, the uh, Ten Mile Creek and Eel Creek uh, that, that uh, are below Ten Mile Lakes and Eel Lake uh, have a fishery. It's kind of a unique fishery area. These uh, streams, after they come out of the lakes and flow towards the ocean, they flow through a dune area. Um, it's it's uh, sand dunes. It's a interesting way to fish steelhead. The creeks have a lot different character than rivers with a gravel bottom. Um, it's just sand bottom and uh, pretty consistent width and depth. Uh, not a whole lot of pool ripple ratio, but we do have people that uh, that fish for those um, that are returning back from our hatchery program that comes out of Eel Lake here. So then traveling south, we have the Coos Basin, and in the Coos Basin, probably the biggest river is the South Coos. Um, that's primarily up above an area called Delwood, which is an, uh, an old uh, uh, mill site for Weyerhaeuser. And the South Coos fishery is all on uh, Weyerhaeuser company property. They do have a permit access uh, system for going up there to fish. Uh, we have uh, we have a hatchery acclimation of smolts and release those about five miles up above Delwood and and uh, that's that's a big river in terms of the coos. Um, then so that's the south coos. The other major split of the coos system is the Millicoma system, and the Millicoma then splits farther up the ba its basin into the east and west Millicoma. Uh, the West Fork Millicoma, we have the. Millicoma Interpretive Center, which is a place where we do have a trap. We collect brood stock there. It's also kind of an educational facility for, for uh, kids. We uh, bring classrooms of kids up there. They help us to spawn fish, both salmon and steelhead. Um, and then we acclimate and release smolts out of there for uh, the steelhead fishery. And it's real popular um, since it is where the rivers have split a couple times. A uh, little bit smaller river. Uh, and uh, it's on, it's actually within the Elliott State Forest, so it has a pretty good watershed above it. Um, there's also up in the Elliott State Forest, there's a fishery on people uh, who, who, fishery for people who like to catch and release for wild steelhead. So they can go on up into the Elliott, probably have miles of river to themselves, um, and just have an opportunity to catch a, a wild steelhead. Uh, then on the East Fork of the Millicoma, there is uh, Nasika County Park is a real popular area. It's, uh, the river is similar in size to the West Fork because they've kind of split in half. Um, but that's an area that has a lot of, uh, uh, quite a bit of mileage of uh, uh, public access for bank fisheries. Um, both the West and the East Millicoma are primarily uh, bank angling. The same with the South Coos River, mostly bank angling. People will put in some pontoons. Um, None of those in the coos are really much of a drift boat uh, fishery. So that's the coos system. Those are the primary areas in the coos. Then uh, moving on south into the coquille system, uh, the largest uh, split there is the south coos or south coquille river, and uh, up above uh, from Myrtle Point on up through up to about Powers. Uh, that's that's large river, uh, lots of sections to float with a drift boat, um, and uh, several small parks for uh, bank angling access. There's county parks. There's a couple little state park waysides that are in there, so you can get in there and bank fish. Uh, but you're also going to see a lot of drift boats coming down. Pretty pretty popular area. A lot of the guides. Um, Lo local guides and also from outside of the area like Roseburg and even to the north, depending on what the rivers are doing up and down the coast for being in shape, they'll, they'll come over to the, to the South Coquille. Uh, the North Coquille, uh, there's a place called Laverne Park, that's a county park. There again, at least a couple miles, probably two or three miles of, uh, of bank angling access, pretty popular. There's camping there, there's some cabins. Um, and uh, so the North Fork uh, is, is another place where folks like to fish for steelhead around here. Uh, that, that's strictly a bank angling show there. Um, we have the 
east fork of the Coquille is kind of a new thing for us on our on our district. Uh, I've been here 20 years. Even prior to that, uh, we didn't have any harvest of wild steelhead allowed, and so we were we had strong hatchery programs in all of our tributaries, and so. Uh, we were just strictly fishing on hatchery fish for years. Well, when we went through the coastal multi-species plan a few years ago, uh, one of the things that we did was uh, we shifted our hatchery smolt release from the east fork of the Coquille up to Laverne Park. So that has bolstered the hatchery return there to, uh, to the north fork Coquille to Laverne. Uh, but the east fork of the Coquille became wild fish emphasis, and it is a place now where we are allowing harvest of uh, one per day, three per season wild steelhead. So that's our only stream in the whole district that has wild steelhead harvest that's allowed. You know, I tend to send people to the West Fork and the East Fork and the Millicoma. They're, they're smaller rivers, it's not big water. Uh, there's not a lot of boat fishing. You don't have drift boats going by in front of you all the time. There's some places where you can get to a spot and and you may have it you know, pretty much to yourself. It's not real high pressure. Uh, South Fork Coquille, for example, and, and the North Fork Coquille up at Laverne tend to get pretty high pressure. So if you like fishing you know, in amongst uh, a bunch of uh, comrades, you know, that's, a, that's a place you can go. But uh, on the East and West Millicoma, it's, it's a little more low key. You might have a hole to yourself and kind of learn the ropes. So. That would be that would be my suggestion. Gear wise, um, you know, I grew up back in the 70s when I first started steelhead fishing as a kid, bouncing the bottom. You know, you'd have your pencil lead, and then you'd have a 18, 20 inch leader back to a corky, maybe some eggs on it, maybe some yarn, bouncing that along the bottom. You tend to hang up a lot, and uh, and uh, lots of snags, lots of retying, uh, but that's. That's the way a lot of us learned. Uh, something that's become more popular in recent years is uh, fishing a slip bobber, putting a bobber stop on your line that'll only, which you can adjust, allowing that bobber to uh, uh, to go up to a stop, and you adjust that based on the depth of the river that's out in front of you. And under that, fishing a jig, um, you can keep that gear up off the bottom. You could float that down, watch for that jig to get pulled under by a steelhead that's grabbed it. Um, I, uh, bringing up my son fishing, I've kind of uh, started him out on that because I could get him set up in a spot drifting down and he probably wasn't gonna hang that pencil lead up on the bottom so much if, you know, fishing that bobber and jig technique. So I think that's really a, really a good one to get people started on steelhead fishing.